So, here we go. We left off yesterday, and I left you trying a orbital notation problem of Mercury, right? Mm -hmm. So we were working Mercury. Okay. Atomic number 80, Mercury. So you should have already had this worked out and had this done, okay? So give me a moment and let me get the answer up here. Okay, so everything is full all the way until the 5D, correct? Yes. So when we make it to the 5D, how many electrons do I have to represent the 5D? Four. I don't know. Wait. Ten. What are we at? Baby? Mercury. Ten. 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 All right. So I have 10 of them to show. So 10 electrons are going to represent. So the first one goes here, right? They all got one. Then, does the second one go here? No. No, no. no. Where does the second one go? On the, the right. Second on the right. Why there? Because they all have, have to get You have to have one in each before you can do the second one? Yes. Why? Spinable electron. No. Yeah. Because they all need a... Undrill. Yeah. I, I can't remember the rule, but I was about to say what the rule says. Alright. So, third one, about right here. No. Up. Up right now. Why does it go up? Because of the spin. I don't know. That's just how we start. Just how we start. That one was simple. Well, I'll do now. Share the rest of them. Go here, but go down. Okay, why do the arrows point in opposite directions? The spin. Because the electrons. About the electrons. We're about the spin. They can't go because they're like in opposite directions because of the. Oh, it's because they're all negative, so they're going to keep repelling, so they're going to do that. That's what you said, right? How do you know what goes up the negative? You always start with up. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So we have to overcome that force. How are we going to overcome it? Those electrons spin. When you have something that has a charge and it spins, it creates a magnetic field. So then there's this magnetic attractive force that overcomes the repulsive force. Okay? Is that not what I said? You, no. You flirted with the idea of that. Okay, so, Ariel here. Every one of these underscores with the 5D, they all are in the same energy level. Every one of them gets one electron first. So the arrow points up, that's the first electron. The second one, following Hun's rule, comes in, they have to point in the opposite direction. Eight, nine, ten. I have ten to show, show ten, I'm done. That is a proper orbital notation of Mercury. I want to stress to you some points where I'll be looking. Everybody will do good. 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 2p. Students will miss a 3d. They'll mess up there and put a 4 instead of a 3. Uh, mess up here, same thing. Mess up, put a 5 instead of a 4. Big one's right here. 4f. A lot of times people will just totally miss it. How would you do that? 4f? 4F is because look at barium. When you get to barium, 56 on your periodic table. What comes after 56? 57. So where's 57? Uh, we the bottom. bottom. Follow the number. Do you see the little blank there with the numbers and the star in it? So That's why I use this periodic table. Okay. It reminds you to go down. Is this the reason it's separated like that, or is it just happen to be separated like this for another reason, and you just have to go like this to continue this classification? There's reasons. There's very many different reasons why the periodic table is the way that it is. But is this one of them? Uh, yes. Cool. All right. So basically, <clears throat> you give us a element, and we. Do this on every single one of them? There's something new he's showing today. So, We're ahead of the other chemistry class, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, that has to be yeah. Only like one day, though, right? Because I'll go ahead and tell you this. You all have been exposed to this for a couple of days. Orbital notation problems are fair game. For you. First period just got their hands in dealing with them this morning. So, they will not have a little notation problem. All this is, is a pattern. Follow the pattern. All it is. This is what I told you. You guys will love these. You learn the pattern, you'll love them. Actually, don't. It gets easier. I don't understand what the pattern is. 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p. You're using the periodic table? Go through it. That's the pattern. All right. Let's do. What's the big one? Atomic number 22, me titanium. Let's you work out. one. Yes, I've been doing. Yep. Orbital notation of titanium. You may work together, of course.
I really need a faster way to wrap these arrows. Literally the motion of these arrows will be impounded in my head. this works, mm -hmm. or identify this, or stuff like that. Okay. It's more than, more than that. Okay. Mr. Roll. Everybody good on Sir, 10? Once you learn it, don't forget it. All is fair game. <laughs> okay. Mr. Roll. Yeah. If we were to be able to look at the periodic table and tell what that little note would be, can we just put that instead? Nice. Nice. Okay, we'll do this. Have a little fun. Yay. Have a little competition. Okay, I'm scared. I don't want to compete. How many of you feel like you're doing good with these? I do, but I don't want to get in front of five. Me, I feel good. I do too. Yeah, but I need to get myself over oh. the Me, 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 me. I'll do it. I'm more aggressive. Can I take my uh, periodic table? All right. Hold on, hold on. You're gonna stand. You're gonna stand there. You're gonna face the wall, where you can't see. Okay. Just stand up there in front, because you can't see past the point. You go down there. Some of the teeth. Okay. Cool. <laughs> where do I stand? You're gonna come over on this side. And you're gonna stand. You're gonna face that wall. Sitting right there at the doorway. It's about the space. All right. So I'm gonna do. I am going to put one on the board of an element with its atomic number. You two are going to race and see who can do it fastest. You all sitting in the seats, you all are as well going to do this. So I'm going to split the board in half. That's a pretty good line. It's going to fill the bottom. Well, we're like the moment. Alright, so you can give me an orbital notation. Don't cheat.
All right, on the count of three. One, two, three, go. Give me an orbital notation for platinum. Number 78.
can give you two an easy one. Y'all were doing really good at it. Uh oh, just knocking that. Listen, which one did you do? Nine on. It's in P block. No, no, no. no, it's not. I forgot. I grabbed the wrong paper. You're okay. Mm -hmm. Make sure everybody got it right here. Where we're at. It's in the F block. start twitching so like, I can tell someone has done something wrong in chemistry. <laughs> I can smell it. Stop right E with mold. Save time. <laughs> well, well. No, he change. really clocks you on that. Alright. Yeah. So look where you're at. You're right. Okay, like one, two, three, four, five. He's tearing it half. Six, seven. Okay, two more. Oh wait, wait, wait. I know you're good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna just be singles here. How many you got to show? Go ahead and play. Mark or somebody else? Freaking out. You're, you're messing up because you're freaking out. Yeah. Okay, stop freaking out. Stop. Stop. 
Look at me. Where's Haley? Show me Haley. Oh, he came there. Okay. Where's Haley? That's over here. So, one. You immediately <laughs> wrote on me. Yeah. And then you start freaking out. It's like, yeah. Andrew. Makes us all be quiet for hours. Freaking out over that? Yeah. Did you even look where it was at? Oh, Andrew, get somebody else's marker. Oh, uh, uh, no. You don't want my flower. Uh, was it you that was drawing in the bathrooms? Yeah, I need a marker board. This hall's going to kill you. Dalton, what? I choose you. I don't think it is. I hope you not. Maddie, who do you pick? I was real excited to get and go. Oh, that's oh, good. Let's go. Wait, Dalton. 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 Understanding, explaining, make sure you're studying your notes. Make sure you understand those things. Okay? There isn't, you haven't learned a whole lot of math stuff, have you? No, that's the math one. I don't know what this is That's the thing, that's why we're having this conversation now. Okay? I will tell you, you looked out. Because looks like you're going to have some more easy stuff on your next quiz. Study your notes, though. Studying those notes are going to be the key. Making sure you understand the ideas we've covered. 
Okay? So, we started on orbital notation uh, yesterday. I gave you all the rules. And I showed you what they would look like, but now I actually want to start into these things today. All right? Hopefully you guys pick it up a little bit better than 8th period did yesterday. What I'm saying, that's what I mean. If you are struggling, if you're not understanding, ask questions. You need to ask questions. Mr. Hall, no mind read. No. If me did, me would be a millionaire. And I would drive a brand new Toyota Tacoma to school to teach you every day. No, I still drive my cobalt. Which runs like a champ. That thing just keeps going. I'm going to run the wheels off that thing, buy four new ones, and run them off. Yeah. Anyway. Do they even make those anymore? What? Do they even make those anymore? I don't think so. Great car, though. Wonderful car. Keep that thing in good condition, and something that might be worth a lot of money. That thing is not even close to good condition. That thing is close to, well, she runs a little work car. Yeah. All right, so this is how I like to do this, especially because what do I give you on every quiz? I give you the periodic table. This is why I like the periodic table method. Go on your periodic table. You find the element. I'm going to choose one. Just to show you an example, I'm going to do iron, atomic number 26. So, this is how I like to do it. I look where I stop at. I'm in the D block, so I know I'm going to stop at D. It's in the fourth row, so what does that make the energy level? 4D. 3D. Why 3D and not 4D? Subtract 1 when it's D. So 3D. How far did I go into that D block is how many electrons I have to represent. Here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I went 6 in, so I have to show 6 electrons. So those are all my notes that I need in order to do this. This is why I love this method. I'm going to start everything from here. It always starts at hydrogen. My stopping point is the element I choose. So I start at first period, I mean first row, and I go through the S block. So 1S is full. I'm going to show you what it looks like here in a second. After 1S is full, then we go to the second row and I go through the S block. So that means what is full to S. How do you know it's 2S? It's the second row and I'm in the S block. After 2S, what's that one? It's 2P. So 2P. After 2P, we come to the third row. What's this one? 3S. How are you getting 3S? It's an S block. It's an S block. It's the third row and it's an S block. It's the third row and it's an S block. Remember, energy level equals row for S and P. So, 3S, there's nothing here in B. But next thing I come to is a P block. What's this one? 3P. 3P. See, it's starting to sound like music in the room. More people that are speaking, it's coming together. You speak together as a class, it sounds beautiful, like a wonderful piece of orchestra. After 3P, fourth row? Four S. Beautiful, beautiful. Mr. Hall, so proud. Now, you went 4S, but look, D block shows up. What's the rule with D block? Minus 1. Minus 1, so we go? 3D. 3D. You don't go all the way through. Iron's my stopping point. So I stop at iron. So I know 1S, 2S, 2P, 3S, 3P, and 4S are completely full, which translates anybody ever watching this is going to be like, oh my god. 
or get motion sickness. Start puking. What's wrong? Motion oh. sickness. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Uh, this is how I would give it to you. What's Z stand for? Time Nick. No. Which tells you where it's at on the periodic table. It tells you the element. You're not wrong. That's why I give it to you right now. So dump number 26, and I would spell it out. Iron. Now, 1S, so I'll put an underscore, 1S. I put 1 underscore because remember, S gets 1 underscore. P gets 3 underscores. The D gets five underscores. How many does F get? Beautiful job, Brett. Okay, it's full, so I fill it up with two electrons. One points up, one points down. Then I go to the two X. One up, one down. What's after two X? Two P. How many underscores? There's three. I'm gonna show you a trick in case you don't want to just memorize it. Go to the block on the periodic table. Take however many columns is in the block. And divide it by two. So look at the S block. How many? <laughs> I'm just saying a eureka moment. How many columns is in the S block? There's two. So divide it by two, you get one. How many underscores for S? One. Go to P block. How many columns in the P block? Six. Divide it by two. Three. How many underscores? Three. Go to D block. How many columns in the D block? There's ten. Divide by two, you get five. Five underscores. F block, how many columns? 14. Divide by 2, you get? You will destroy the SAT. Yes? Your my skills are very strong. Okay, so you label this in the middle. Here's the middle of it. So 2P. Please make sure you're labeling in the middle. 2P is full. I want to take this moment to stress to you though, remember Hund's rule. Hund's rule was so important. Each one of these orbitals are in the same energy level, so every one of them will receive one electron before it receives a second one. Which means, this gets an up one, an up arrow, then the next one gets an up arrow. You don't go straight here and put a down arrow. This is going to matter. Same thing here. Everyone gets an up arrow first. Then they will start receiving a second. That's when you go back to the beginning and you start putting the down arrows. So come here. Down. 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 After 2P we got... Yes. Is it full? Yeah, how do you know it's full? You went all the way through it. Say that to me. You went all the way through Thank you. I don't know if you're like really all confused right now or if you're kind of well, like, where's the trick? I don't understand what you're saying. Um, but yeah. it's full. What do you mean by it's full? Yeah. Each orbital can hold two electrons. That's all it can hold. So when it's full, it's full of electrons. You have to move to the next one. The next orbital or the next energy level. <laughs> so everything up to your stopping point is full, except for the row of the, the, la the last block in energy level you get to. So everything will be full all the way up to 3B. Beautiful. Okay. It's fast. 
that's when that. we go <laughs> both the arrows. Exactly. Sorry. That's when you stop, you follow the rule. Okay. Okay, after three S is what? How many underscores? Why? Okay. There's six columns in P block, by about two you get three. It's full. After three P is? Four S. Four S. It's full. What's after four S? Three D. How many underscores? Five. So go to the middle. Three D. Now, is it full? No. no. Everything else we filled all the way up, and this is how you're going to do these. That's why I make the note. Look where you're stopping. I've stopped here. Stop the problem. And I throw. I got six electrons to show. I have to throw six of these bad boys. So we'll start going through. Yes. Okay, so the six is because you're that many into the Yes. Count every one of those elements as if it's an electron. So it's six in, it's six electrons. So the first one goes here. Where's the second one go? Mm -hmm. Option one mm -hmm. or two? Both. Better one, better two. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. And you stop. Can I be honest with you right now? I understand all the blank looks and the look of, I'm confused, this should be harder than this. That's it. The only thing I can do to try and trick you is make you go into the B block and the F block. And if you remember, N equals row minus 1 for D block and N equals row minus 2 for F block. There's nothing I can do to trick you. If you follow that and you follow Hun's rule, nothing I can do. This periodic table is built for you to be able to do this. Yes? Okay, so like you had the six, right? Yeah. So what if you was in the D block on the next row and you're in the same spot? Let's say you move down one. All right, so are you? Yeah. I should, yeah. I should just wait one period. Anyway, so would you count all the other ones above the D block or would you still start at the, that row? Okay. You're going to count on that row because this is what would happen if you did that. Over. So you're wanting to stop here now, right? Yeah. Everything changes then. This is no longer your stopping point at iron. You go all the way through until here. That's your new stopping point. So what you would do for 3D, let's just do it. So I don't even know what that element is. So it would be full all the way up until 4D, right? Yes. So atomic number, I covered it off my periodic table. Our new stopping points. I'm in the D block, so I'm going to stop at the D. What's the energy level though? So look where you're at, ruthenium, go all the way over. What row is you ruthenium in? 4D. 
It's going to be 4D, and you've got that because it's in the fifth row, right? So you're in the D box, subtract one, so 4D. How many electrons do you have to show? How many of those elements in the D block are you? Six. Six. So you have six electrons to show. I'm going to go on and write all this down really quick. Pausing to let you copy it down. I feel like I should have brought coffee for everyone today. You all are so quiet. <laughs> I drink my, my whole coffee on the way over here, so I'm like holding back everything in me because I just want to roll, roll, I'm going to roll right now. Electrons will go into that, into that 3D. This is the thing. You will. This is the part where it doesn't matter which one I, I, I start with. If I start with quantum numbers or if I start with electron configuration. Quantum numbers explain to you what really in depth what the energy level is and what these letters are. These letters depend on shapes, and every one of these orbitals is a different orientation. So you know how like in math. You have 1D, X, 2D, X, Y, 3D, X, Y, Z. This is going off that premise. But when you get to the D, there's five different orientations. When you get to the F, it's seven different orientations. This is the part where I'm saying you just got to accept it. And I know that's... I know that's hard to hear, and it sucks to hear, but you just got to accept it right now. Okay, what comes after 3D? 4B, how many underscores? 1, 2, 3. But shouldn't there be 4? We're in the 4th energy level. Shouldn't there be 4 underscores? Why? Doesn't the number tell you how many underscores? What tells you how many underscores? The letter. Oh, thanks. After 4P? 5S. 5S. It's full. What about after 5S? 4D. Okay, 4D. How many underscores? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 4D. And is it full? No. Wait, why? <coughs> okay, so how far in? Six. So how many electrons I showed? Six. Okay. So do I do it like this? Like one here, then here? No. Why? Hundred. Hundred. What's hundred rule say? Yeah, we'll get one the first Perfect. So I go here? Yeah. Then here? In there? Yeah. What about there? Yeah. Then here? Yeah. 
about here? Yeah. Why? It's six. It's that simple. I know you're not expecting that. It's that simple. I don't know, I just feel like we should take that number and then like divide by something and then multiply them and convert it. I don't know. It, it is not. I feel like. <clears throat> this is the thing. You get the pattern, you got it. With electron configurations. And this is where I'm going to look at you and say, look at me, hear everything that is coming out of my mouth. First with electron configurations, you need to understand the three rules. Remember the three rules? You should be able to tell me the three rules. Secondly, you need to be able to tell me and know the three different types. Right now all you've learned is orbital notation. You'll also learn electron configuration and noble gas configuration. You need to know the three, know the differences. I'm not the guy that's going to look at you and say, just do all three. I'm going to ask you, give me an orbital notation for this element. Give me an electron configuration for this element. Give me a noble gas configuration for this element. Okay? You have to know the difference in the three and how to do them. That's not the data, right? Are they all no. like similar to that? Or? Yes, that's why I'm taking so much time here. What happens is each one builds off the one before it. If you get orbital, once we're done with the orbital notation, I do electron configuration, and you know how long we're taking to do orbital notation? You do electron configuration like that. You will like it more. You know how you learn how to solve systems of equations by graphing? And then you learned you can solve systems of equations by substitution and elimination, and you want to like flip the desk and say, why did we do that? Why did we graph? Why did we do that? This is going to be the same thing. So this is what it's like. How y'all feel? I know it's throwing you off. I know it's that simple, and I know you're expecting me to like throw some atomic bomb at you right now. Okay. I feel like you want to build a bomb. What is it? That's the part I don't why you go to the four day after you get in the fifth energy level? Okay. This is one of those things like accept it, but I'm going to explain it to you. Is what you're going to see is look at the S and the P. The S and the P, three, three. Look here. We have four, then three D, then four P. How many electrons is in an S subshell? How many is here? There's two. How many electrons are in the 4P? Two, four, six. If you've never heard this rule before, you're going to hear this rule in this class a lot. And you're going to do a lot with it. It's called the octet rule. The octet rule is every, uh, every element is looking to have eight valence electrons. So eight electrons in their outer shell. Four, three. Which one's the outer shell? Four. Three went back in, but then four comes out. The S and the P, if they're full, they add to eight. That's where our valence electrons are at. That's why you jump. Do what? Why didn't you just say that earlier? That, makes, that really makes a lot of sense. <laughs> because some kids don't know the octet rule. They don't have to know the rule to know how to do math. Just let me simplify it. Take the one forward that's the outside and the one after is the inside. Okay. And take the after and after and that should equal eight. I mean, it can't be more than eight. Alright, I'm going to give you one of my favorite ones. Look at me. This is a great example of one that will be there that I can check multiple things and make sure you can do these properly. Atomic number 74, tungsten. 
I want you to do tungsten. You can work as a group. You can work together. I'm in the room also. You can ask me questions. Feel free to ask someone sitting next to you. I do not care. But I want you to do atomic number 74, tungsten. Be careful. Make sure you're very slow and very detailed. Tungsten sits right here. Fine, but I'm telling you, I expect you to try this.
You can practice problems to check your knowledge. I'm not going to throw something at you like that. This goes just for you. You will not have to work an orbital notation problem. Does not mean you may not have to define it or tell me something about it. Everything else is fair game for you. All the conceptual part. Yes. I'm sorry.